In the year 1998, aspiring video game designer Victor Keesley and his brother Eugene founded the small gaming company Wargaming.net. We here at Wargaming America recently sat down with Eugene Keesley as he shared with us some of the history of the company. So uh, the original founders of Wargaming are Victor Keesley, uh, our father uh, Vladimir and myself. And the original start of Wargaming as a concept and later followed as a legal company and the, uh, the, the whole group was to build uh, military games, games that are based on uh, strategy, based on uh, uh, thought process, not on the trigger happiness. Uh, first office of uh, Wargaming was actually my bedroom. So uh, Victor and myself had the, uh, the pleasure of having separate bedrooms and when things started uh, uh, working and growing, we moved in, uh, into one bedroom and made uh, another be bedroom into an office. When we started uh, adding people, some of them worked remotely, some of them worked in their college dorms, some of them worked uh, in their rented apartments. And uh, then once we uh, started gaining slightly more momentum when we were over a dozen people, uh, we rented a, a dedicated apartment to serve as our uh, office. And uh, from then on, it just kept growing. My initial reaction to the world of tanks, the very, very initial, uh, was, Victor, I out of your freaking mind. Uh, but then we spent some time talking and discussing, and uh, then I got to play the, uh, the alpha test uh, slightly later, and uh, the game got addictive pretty much on game number two. Uh, game number one was learning the controls, game number two, I scored three frags, and since then I was sold. Self-publishing uh, changed Wargaming quite a bit. Uh, uh, the funny fact is that Wargaming was forced to self-publish uh, uh, World of Tanks because uh, it was a natural uh, intention, luckily a really, really, really failed one, to find a publisher for the upcoming title. Uh, uh, the, we went on a road tour with pretty much every single uh, uh, big uh, publishing name in the market to offer the game for publishing and the uh, the response was anonymously around the notion of are you crazy tanks never gonna fly and we're very thankful to every single of the uh, top publishers in the world for refusing uh, to work with us on that title because we were forced to self-publish it and that's where uh, the one of the biggest components in success of World of Tanks is. The day before there were still a lot of uh, people doubting the success of the game, whether people would want to uh, play it and uh, live in it. Day one uh, removed any of those doubts. About three months into the uh, operation of the game since launch, uh, our players uh, successfully crashed our data center, uh, uh, it crumbled under the load, and that data center was built out to last for a year. And that was uh, the second and most uh, substantial uh, confirmation that we're on the right path and the game is a success. And a success it has been. World of Tanks now boasts over 60 million registered users, has won numerous awards and has repeatedly broken world records. We caught up with two other key players at the Wargaming America office, PR director Chris Cook and senior producer Gareth Luke, to take a look at where Wargaming is now and what the future holds for the company. Frankly, there's a lot. So currently at Wargaming we have obviously the award-winning World of Tanks game, which has been live for three years. Um, at E3 we also announced World of Warplanes, Open Beta, and World of Tanks Xbox 360 as well. A huge move for us, extremely excited finally bringing one of our games, World of Tanks specifically, to the Xbox 360 console. It's, it's, we're excited and we think it's going to be a really big thing for us. We've also been entering into some development in the web space um, with Generals, which has been announced and will be going into Alpha fairly soon. Also with Blitz um, on mobile as well. So we're, we're starting to look at other products which really um, add to our portfolio across platforms. So what's the present and what's the future for World of Tanks? The present is really making sure that we keep the game growing and evolving with new content. Uh, we were always adding new modes and new tanks and 
looking at new nations to add into the game and we're really making sure that the community is kept happy and really left with a lot of content to play with. So we listen to our players at Wargaming. I think that's one of the things we're known for. Um, obviously Wargaming North America, we're set up to actually deal with our customer direct. We have a huge team of community managers and consumer support folks in our office whose, whose job really is to listen to the players. The producer role in North America is there for that very reason. We, we listen to our customers, we listen to their feedback and it's not just through one source, it's through many sources and not only help them, but really take feedback and listen to what concerns are about, say, things like matchmaker or balancing or premium tanks that they want to buy or tiers that they think should be expanded upon or reduced. And then we turn that feedback into meaningful design requests to the uh, development teams in Mints and also in the US as well, obviously with um, Gas Power Games and Wargaming West. The community always has a voice with us and we pride ourselves on our on our ability to take those opinions and take that input and take it to the game and make those things happen. One of the things in listening to our customer that we determined was that we don't want a scenario where the people that pay the most have an advantage over the rest. As far as free to play gaming goes, I think there's sort of been a stigma. So as innovators in free to, free -to play, we're thinking that pushing to free to win is really something that we, we need to do and, and have to go towards. And what that really means to, to our players is that there's a competitive landscape that's there regardless of what you pay. The concept that we're really trying to pioneer, this concept of free to win, is really taking the playing field and leveling it for everyone, whether you pay or whether you don't. And that's very important to us as we move forward. So as we make this shift now, you'll be seeing that a lot of our features and games will be really pushing more towards, towards free to win. And you know, from fundamentally, from an industry perspective, we think that that really has to be the future of, of, of free-to-play gaming. So the motto is we create legendary online games globally with passion and definitely I think that's something that we're always working towards especially this year and moving forward. I think that when you look at what we've done in the past year particularly with our announcement of the move to the Xbox 360 we're really sort of making that huge leap into the global gaming space. True World of Tanks PC and World of Warplanes those are both global products but I think when you look at the fact that there's a lot more out there than just PC gaming. There's console gaming, there's mobile gaming. And you look at World of Tanks 360, you look at World of Tanks Blitz, you look at World of Tanks Generals, you can see that from a company perspective, we're really branching out into a lot of new territories. New territories, I think, that are pretty atypical for a free-to-play gaming company. And we're excited, I think the industry is excited, and I think we're getting a lot of, a lot of eyes watching us to see what we do next. It's not very shocking to see how far we come I would call it mind-boggling how far we've come. Because uh, I remember the apartment we started in, or rather the bedroom we started in, and then the apartment, uh, where at, at times I had to bring food and actually cook food for our developers. And then even in the recent history, uh, slightly more than two years ago, uh, we were a company of uh, 180 people hosted in one office on one floor in Minsk. And Two years later, boom, we're in 17 offices uh, on four continents of the world and we're 1,700 uh, uh, valuable people strong. It is mind-boggling and uh, sometimes difficult to cope with, but that's uh, where we're moving and it's by far not the final uh, point of our journey. We're still getting started. We're taking those really first big steps into becoming a truly global company. We've pretty much got our uh, future laid out in front of us. We have to do better with every game that we do. That's a battle. So keep an eye out for these amazing new titles and stay tuned for 15 more exciting years of Wargaming.net. Let's battle.